Hey, welcome back. You know, every once in a while, a project gets announced, and it's got a creative team that is just a dream. Not only do you love them, but they've worked together before and have an amazing track record. I mean, it sounds like I'm talking about The Irishman, right? Scorsese's new movie with De Niro and Pacino. Uh, but you know what? This is the comic book equivalent. Today, we're going to talk about uh, The Batman's Grave by Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch uh, with inks by Kevin Nolan. Today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome to the show. Today, man, there hasn't been a Batman comic that's had me this excited for a really long time. When I heard about this being announced, uh, this was, was coming uh, maybe six months ago, man, I started quivering in anticipation because, well, let's talk about the creative team of Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch for a second, right? Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch together created The Authority, um, one of the great Wildstorm titles that had a long track record. Even after Ellis left, The Authority characters continue to this day. They broke ground. Uh, uh, amazing writing, incredibly detailed technical art. Like that's where Brian Hitch came into his own was on the authority. He had been working in comics for many years, but it was when working on that, that he really refined his style and what a style it is. You know, I, the best I can put it, it's a cross between maybe Neil Adams and Alan Davis, uh, with a hearty help and a Jack Kirby thrown in there for dynamics and action. And you know what? Why am I talking about this, right? What the heck do we have a million dollar comics cam for if not to look at comics? So let's check it out. Yeah, it's the Batman's grave. Live and in color. And man, beautiful stuff. I mean, let's, let's, let's talk about this for a second. Just opening this up. We're going to talk a lot about Brian Hitch and what makes him in my eyes, one of the greats uh, of, of comics today. You know, you besides the work on Authority he did with Warren Ellis that I talked about, you, you'll remember him from The Ultimates and The Ultimates 2. And most recently, he did a year-long run on Hawkman that, like, almost nobody read, except I did. Uh, one, out of morbid curiosity, because Hitch has sort of a, a reputation for being slow, and I thought for sure this would be late. Hawkman was delivered each and every month on time. And so that gives me hope that The Batman's Grave, which is also a 12-issue series, will, will stay on time. But man, with this kind of quality, sometimes you can forgive a little bit of lateness because just look at the beauty of this stuff. Like, not only has it got incredible detailed pencils by Hitch, we got the great Kevin Nolan doing inks, who's an amazing uh, penciler in his own right, right? He has this sumptuous black... Uh, inking here that just really just adds a layer of polish on top of Hitch that is amazing. And then Colors by Alex Sinclair, who's pretty famous. And then Richard Starkings, there's nobody more famous in computer lettering than him. So we've got an all-star team here. Um, it's a beautiful package. It's super classy. Um, and we open up with uh, the idea of uh, Alfred is tending the graves of Thomas and Martha Wayne. And the whole conceit and where the title comes from is that they, you know, they they set up their plots to be buried in, and they set up family plots on Wayne Manor for themselves and eventually for Bruce when he dies. When uh, so, um, hence the Batman's grave, and and um, Alfred often looks at it and reflects that he someday will bury Bruce in this grave before Alfred dies. This might be ignoring current Batman continuity where Alfred did die, but um, that's okay. Let's keep going. Oh my God, a double page spread. An incredible cityscape. We get a look at Brian Hitch's Batman, which has got some of the kind of signature uh, Hitch elements, right? The sort of ribbing on the boots and the, uh, you know, the a very sort of like machined uh, aesthetic. Everything, it's very in fitting with comic book movies the way comic book movies are today. And no wonder, since so many of the designs used in the Ultimates and, and uh, other comic book movies recently have, have owed a lot to what Brian Hitch has done design-wise. And just look at this picture. It's beautiful. Lots of guys can draw something like this. You've seen pictures like this by Jim Lee and many, plenty. Anybody who draws Batman is going to draw Batman brooding over the city, right? Does it look like this? 
does it look like a real city or does it look like some fantasy uh, gothic wonderland? This looks like a real city. Um, let's keep going here. Um, and we get to see uh, more stuff of Gotham City, just everyday stuff of real people on the street. Now, I recently remarked in my Ghost Rider review that the artist in that, Aaron Cooter, I think, is great at drawing monsters and crazy things and Ghost Rider and nutty things, but really the art fell down when it came to like a street scene or a quiet scene between two people. And we're going to see in this comic that Hitch is the complete package. He does it all. He knows how to draw all this stuff. So look at this crowd scene. It's Look at the angle of the camera. Look at the... Uh, the various angles here, camera angles employed. That's the, you know, that's a great, what a great cinematographer does. And that's what a comic artist is, right? If not the director, cinematographer, uh, lighting designer, costume designer, all of those functions that are played by literally hundreds or thousands of people, special effects are all done by um, the artist. So let's see our first action scene. Now let's get Batman in action because Hitch is also known for amazing action scenes. If you remember the Ultimates and you remember Ultimate Captain America and World War II stomping heads and being a badass, then you know Hitch knows how, or Hitch knows how to draw like dynamic action, tough guy action. This is one of my favorites. Just a kick to the face. We got teeth and blood flying. Look at that photorealism on the face. Look at that, the tread of Batman's boots. This is beautiful stuff. Another thing I like, a little bit hard to see here, but he's got a different sort of design for Batman's, uh, uh, you know, thing, his rope thingy, his, what do you call it, a grappling hook thingamajig. You know, usually it's like a thing they hold in their hand and psh, it goes off and then they hold onto their hand and it's like, whoop! Uh, yeah, talk about shoulder dislocation. Check this one out, the gun itself is more like a pulley. It's a little hard to see here, but the gun itself is more like a pulley that he then attaches the cable to his belt and can then sort of go up way more realistic. It's this kind of like realistic physics and action and equipment that Warren Ellis is known for writing and Brian Hitch is known for drawing. So let's, man, let's keep going. And let's just... Just drink this in. Look at these page layouts. Look at the panels. The action is clear. The drawing is striking and beautiful and fun to look at. I, I, can you tell I'm excited about this Batman comic book, folks? Okay, so Batman, you know, Gotham City is a crime-ridden hellhole, overridden with crime, and, and um, uh, Alfred is monitoring the 911 service. Like, you know, there's, there's calls backed up all over the place, and we got a murder being reported, and they can't get to it. So Batman is like, I will respond. And this is where we get to see Batman acting like a detective. And, and much more like a true police detective than I think I've ever seen him written, right? Because he's showing up at the door and knocking and going like, you called 911 and uh, and 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 phoning in to the cops and, and using police lingo to be like, you know, we got to get a, what does he say? Uh, get a, you need to send a bus out here, right? Like get the morgue truck out here to check out this body that he's found. This dead body, this guy with a dead body, he looks like he's obsessed with Batman somehow. He's got all this Batman stuff on the wall. Batman pulls this out and says, running emulator scan. That's all he says. And then he looks and goes, this could be five years worth of material. The body's been totally clean. There's no, there's no, not going to be any forensic evidence here for me for sure. So he calls in the meat wagon or whatever. Takes off back to the back cave. Here we get another spread and we get another look at some of the stuff that Hitch does the best. Like when he designed the the Triskelion, the Avengers headquarters, right, in the Ultimates. Well, we get to see here what he does with the Batmobile, the Batcave, all these. You know, n nothing strikingly new about this design, but what a great layout. And, and what's this crazy thing hanging out in the background? I'm not even sure. Um, hopefully we'll get to see it. Um, and then Batman returning home. And uh, here's Alfred on the couch uh, drinking scotch, drinking expensive whiskey of some kind. And let's just look at, let's just without even looking at talking about the dialogue. Let's just look at the acting on display here. Look at how real these poses look. Look at this face. 
look at the emoting that's happening here. And then I want to talk for a second about the dialogue here because there's some dialogue that's like nothing I've ever read in a Batman comic book before. Okay, right here. You know, Batman comes home, Alfred's been drinking, he says, well, you know, what's bothering you, Alfred? He says, I'll tell you what's bothering me. Some nights all I see is an old soldier helping a very rich man to leave his mansion at night in his expensive car to visit horrible beatings upon poor people. He says, that's not what we do, Alfred. Isn't it? It might have been easier for you to buy Gotham City. Instead, you scratch away at it every night Impoverished people forced into crime or suborned by gangsters with not a hundredth of your own resources. Okay, this is, so we're playing on class warfare. We're talking about stuff that is clearly in the news. We're tying it into Batman, but not in a, like, not in a, not in a ham-fisted way. Like, this is a conversation you could see uh, Alfred thinking about. Because, you know, true, Batman goes out and he beats up, like, street criminals sometimes. And, like, who are those but, like, in many cases, victims in their own right. And and Batman's like, hey, man, they have choices. And Alfred says, look, it'd be easier just to kill them all. I'm a soldier. When I was serving, I fought for my life and for my values. It's not murder, it's self-defense. What really bothers me, Master Bruce, is that you work in a war zone and you're the only one who doesn't bloody know it. Now, one, Warren Ellis is English. So... For whatever reason, when he writes Alfred, I, you, I, you, it's just believable to me, right? The dialogue, the weariness, the very Britishness of him, the the dark, dry sense of humor that's on display in this book, in, in other parts, obviously. Um, it's just one of the reasons you got to love Warren Ellis and why I'm excited to have him on Batman, and especially writing a character like Alfred. Um, rest in peace, Alfred pages here let's see um so what do we see next next we get to see something really cool so this is warren ellis taking batman making him a detective again right but he's not just any detective this is batman he's a high-tech batman he's got techniques remember that emulation scan he did well he scanned the entire murder scene and now he's projecting it in sort of a virtual reality kind of holographic display in the back cave so that he can like replay and get inside the mind of the well, he says not of the killer but of the victim right he goes look i'm not capable of getting inside the mind of a killer because i'm not a killer uh, but i am capable of getting inside the mind of a victim so next we're going to see something it's it's something i haven't really seen in comics before this is I mean, you could do it in a movie, you could do it in comics, you could do it in many different ways, but it's done here so beautifully and subtly. This is Batman, as he's talking through, he's talking to him as if he was the victim. And he's reasoning through, based on what he's seeing and what he's feeling, he's empathizing with the victim to try and uh, make some assumptions based on that and what he sees and the clues that he sees around the room. It's a very... Sherlock Holmesy kind of thing that he's pulling off a cake. It's Batman, right? If anybody could do it, it would be Batman. So he's doing it, and he's doing it in this crazy virtual reality setup in the Batcave. So this is like it or not, I like it. It's something new. I don't. Well, I've never seen before from Batman, and that's what we'll talk about at the end. Why? Why I really love that. Um, so. Uh, we got Batman, and then finally he figures out, he, he makes a realization of um, what's really going on there, and then what happens, but, oh, I'm not going to spoil it, I'm not going to show the last page. It's a cliffhanger ending to bring us to issue number two, and uh, I'm on board for sure. So uh, let's talk about this for a second. One of the things that I wanted to say was that what makes this great is one the visual game it's at its height so it's like we've got a world-class screenwriter which is really what a writer for a comic is and then we've got a world-class director lighting casting set designer just visual controller in brian hitch man this is two guys who are modern masters of the comics medium working together on a character that's super cool but has not seemed super cool to me in a really long time. Tom King's run on Batman, it's got its really interesting points. 
um, but it's meandering quite a bit. All this Batman who laughs stuff. If I want to watch Hellraiser, I'll watch Hellraiser. I don't, you know, the demonic Joker poison and stuff doesn't do it for me. What does it for me is like a Batman kind of grounded in real technology a little bit more uh, with an awesome story, with awesome visuals and, and like just told with care by great masters. And that's what we're getting with the Batman's grave. So stick around. I'm, I'm going to keep reviewing these. Uh, please let me know what you thought, think of this. If you haven't bought it, make sure to go pick it up. And hey, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel and maybe hit like on this video if you thought this was a good review. Check out some of the other reviews that we've got on the channel and uh, keep supporting us and helping us and we'll keep doing it for you. So hey, thanks for watching. We will see you next time.